Good morning and good afternoon for folks who have joined a little bit early for our Microsoft Teams and Power Hour. This is Mike Fuda with Microsoft. We're going to get things kicked off right at 11 a.m. Eastern today. Hello, everybody who's joined us a couple minutes early. This is Mike Fido with Microsoft. We're going to just get started in a couple minutes. Thanks for joining.
Well, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. For Thank you for joining the Microsoft Teams and Power Hour with Marquee 360. My name is Mike Feuda. I'm a customer success manager with Microsoft, and I'm joined today by our fantastic partners, Marquee 360, uh, Neil Elcott and Deepika Gandhi are here from Marquee 360. A Microsoft partner who specializes in project management solutions and Office 365. Uh, I wanted to kick things off today just by talking a little bit at a very high level around project management with Microsoft Teams. So the first thing I wanted to do is that we were preparing today for the session is to really just kind of baseline everybody around, you know, what are we trying to do with project management and, and goals around working together in, in, with Microsoft Teams in this whole spirit. So I was doing a little research ahead of time, wanted to kick off with, with, um, with some of this topic, and I found this great quote, a goal without a plan is just a wish. So there's lots of details and statistics and perspectives around how successful you can be by having a plan to meet your goals. A couple that I found that I, I just wanted to share with everyone on the call today to kick things off. One was writing down your goals gives you an 80% higher chance of achieving them. And this was probably the biggest theme of information and studies and research I found in how much more successful a team is at achieving their goals and getting results in, in doing the planning around a project or a mission or something to that cause. So I think we're all here today and trying to be really efficient in achieving the, the goals that we're, we're after. On a lighter note, I found a study from Baylor University that had a group of about 50 students and they divided them into two different groups. And at the end of the week, they had some students just think about all the to-do lists that they had to do and then they had the other half of the students write down the, the, the list and make a plan. And they found that those students that had to-do lists fell asleep nine minutes faster than the others that just reflected on what had to be done. So if there's a little silver lining here in what we're trying to do, maybe everyone will get a good night's rest having to do your plans and, and memorial, memorializing them inside of your, your task management system. So let's talk a little bit about the things that Microsoft offers through Office 365 around task management. So today we're really going to be focused around teamwork, but do know that you've got a couple places as to put down your tasks as an individual. So if you're making to-do lists and, and keeping tasks outside of a, a, a pen and a pad, you've got the Microsoft to-do You've got tasks and outlook. So there's a lot of options from an individual productivity perspective to keep tasks together. But then when today, what we're really going to do, though, is focus on the teamwork aspect of of planning. So I want to spend a few minutes for those of you that are new to this and and haven't run into planner before to just give you some awareness and baseline everybody about Microsoft planner. And then we're going to turn things over uh, to Neil at Marquee 360 to talking about taking your planning to the next level with, with Microsoft Project and some other good stuff in Office 365. So for those of you that, again, that are new to this, Planner is an application in Microsoft Office 365, and it's there to help create tasks, and it's really a kind of a task management system for teams. And We've got a very simple, organized experience inside of, of Planner. I'll show you in a minute in a little demo how you get started with Planner. The, the other pieces of Planner, too, are, is that you're going to use this with your team. So you're able, anyone that's with inside of your Active Directory and Office, 3, Office 365 environment, uh, you'll be able to start adding teams together in, inside of Teams, the, those team members, and having tasks assigned to folks throughout that, that task management and project plan. There's quick, easy visuals to see through different charts and scheduling. And you're also going to be able to take advantage of Office 365 as that foundation to use other pieces inside of that team together with Planner. 
Planner is, a, is an application, again, with inside of Office 365, and it's an application inside of Teams. It's the number one add-in inside of Teams. When, so when you're working together in a team, you've got different applications that you can extend your teamwork with. Planner is the number one used app that is added into a team site. I also wanted to include, as, as if you want to learn more about Planner throughout uh, your day and, and beyond, here's a couple uh, friendly sites that you can go to from Microsoft where you can learn more about the product, ask questions throughout the technical community, and also if you want to suggest any features or keep an eye on what we're planning on building, because we do, do make changes in Office 365 based on your feedback and requests, head over to planner.uservoice.com. You'll be able to see some of the top requests other, uh, other customers and folks are asking for. You can vote on the ones that, that if you see something that you really want to have a capability in. And this is how we, we use the, uh, the feedback that, that you are providing to build out the roadmap for the product. So what I want to do here right now is just switch over to a quick demo. Let me just change my content for one second. Okay, be right there. Okay, I've got a couple windows going here, so let me get the right one set up. All right, so we are here now looking at the, at the infamous Contoso Electronics Company. And I just want to show everybody that, you know, inside of your Office 365 tenant, once you're logged in, if you go to office.com and you're logged in, you're going to be able to get to the waffle up here, which is a familiar experience, and look at your applications. So inside of one of the applications, again, is Planner. So if I click on Planner from the waffle, this will take me to the Planner application with inside of Office 365. And I can see with inside of Contoso Electronics, I'm logged in as Megan right now. And I can see some of the existing plans that were already created inside of Planner. One of the other things I want to show you too is if you want to take a look at some of the plans that have been built inside of Planner here, you've got a lot of different options that, that you may have not been uh, not normally seen before, including exporting the entire planning list to an Excel spreadsheet. So this is uh, one thing that you won't see inside of Teams, but if you go to the plan inside of the uh, inside of the Office 365 tenant, you'll be able to ex export all the, the task items into a plan. The other thing to note is that all, all of this is powered behind, uh, behind SharePoint. So if you wanna take a look at the plan with inside a SharePoint page, you could also uh, hit the sites option and head over that way. So this is one of, again, one of the plans. What I'm going to do now is just switch over and show folks. So inside of Microsoft Teams, if you wanted to get started with, with Planner, if you never used it before, inside of a channel, inside of Teams, we can start to extend by adding the, the Planner application into inside of a channel. Let's call this St. Patrick's Day virtual event. So I'm going to create a new plan. So here's our new plan. Let's say order green drinks. Add a couple things here. And so it's that simple to start adding tasks inside of plan or inside of a team's channel right away. We can add a different bucket. So if this is going to be some tasks that have to get done, we can, and we have bigger themes that we have to add inside of Planner. Here's how I can start to add those bucket themes. So we can say, here's our agenda that we're going to build out. Maybe we've got a new bucket for team training, etc. 
And what I could do now is come back and look at these tasks and figure out, OK, this task needs to fall under the team training so we can start to move tasks into. Oh, let me get these uh, over here, move tasks into different different places with inside the uh, inside the plan itself. Start to look at the visual. I talked about the visualizations before in planner and here's how we can go through and look at the, the visualization of all the tasks by charts or also by a schedule. So pretty straightforward stuff with Microsoft Planner. Again, it's an application inside of Teams that you're going to use to extend for that kind of that next level of task management and be able to start to, to work with your team inside of that channel to have that shared space for all, all this, this good stuff. So what I would like to do now, though, is turn things over to Neil Alcott at Marquee 360 to talk really about the next level in you've got, you know, you're, you've gotten your foundation with with Microsoft Planner and things are going OK, but, but now you want to take it to the next level uh, with Microsoft Project or doing some other stuff. So Neil, let me turn it over to you. Great, thanks, Mike. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Let me know if everybody can see it. All right, let me get started. So hi everybody. Real quick introductions for myself and my partner. My partner is uh, Deepika Gandhi. You probably have heard of her as uh, she was reaching out to you guys for inviting you to this event. Um, she's a former Microsoft employee and she was a uh, solution sales specialist focused on SharePoint, Office 365 and Project. And my name's Neil Alcott and I've been working in the Microsoft Project Management space for over 20 years now. So I've done hundreds of implementations using the various Microsoft project management tools and one thing i want to discuss real quick mike just gave you guys a great demonstration of the planner functionality um, microsoft has a number of different products that can help you with project management we can incorporate all these within teams as well and i'll show you some of that today um, but this is a good slide to kind of give you an idea of where on the spectrum, you know, where would you use some of these different products? Um, all of them can be used for task management, you know, it's different levels of project management, um, but some are more geared more towards individuals or maybe the team level, and then some are really geared more towards the enterprise level. So when we look at task management, as Mike was just showing you, Planner is a great option for that. And of course, everybody still uses Excel for managing task list and you know managing work more at an individual level, your to-do list. You also have the to-do app, which Mike mentioned as well. Um, you also have a new product called Project for the Web, which I'll give you a quick demo of that as well. And that's really meant for the occasional project managers um, where you are managing a group of individuals, um, but it's more of an ad hoc type task management. You want to keep it organized, but still have the capabilities of creating a robust schedule and um, doing resource, you know, some some light resource management. You also have your more traditional full time project managers. They would use Project Online Professional or Microsoft Project. Um, but then we also have the enterprise project managers, and that's where we're really leveraging the capabilities of Project Online. So at this level and also this level, we're probably looking for more visibility across multiple projects, not working on individual projects. Um, and then maybe we're also trying to get a better idea of say resource management or prioritizing our projects. There's a lot of additional capabilities that we have once we get up into Project Online and, and at the enterprise level. OK, so what I'm going to do is walk you through several demos here. So one is I'm going to go to Teams. And. As Mike demonstrated, you know, one thing you can do with Planner is you can add Planner as a tab 
within teams. So if you have a individual Microsoft team, you want to use planner to manage the task and the work that needs to be done by the individuals in that team. You can do that and you know simply add a planner plan here and then manage the task this way. You can also load planner as an app within teams. So Mike showed you how you can go to the waffle menu and then pick planner. If you're spending most of your day within teams, you may want to actually just add it here as an actual app within teams. So if you go down to apps, you can then search for planner. Select it here and then once you do that, it'll load here as an icon on your side menu. What's nice with this is you'll then get kind of an aggregated view of all of your planner task across all the projects or all the Microsoft Teams that you're working on. And you can still do drag and drop and everything else. This is the same as what Mike was just showing you from the waffle menu, but now we're just accessing it within Teams. Um, if we want to take it the next step up, so going back to my slide real quick, if we want to look at it from project for the web, there's a couple things we can do. One is um, for project for the web. So if I jump back here, if I go into here and I say a new blank project. By the way, you would need a project plan one license to do this. What it's doing here is it's creating a project so I can go into here and I can say it's our uh, you know, March 17th demo. And then I can go in and I can start creating task. And this is more similar to Microsoft Project. So if I want to go in and add some other columns like uh, how much effort does it take? What's the start date? What's the finish date? I can add additional columns here. And I can also go in and specify who it's going to be assigned to. So maybe I'm assigning this task to me. Maybe for this task, I'm going to assign it to Topeka. So it'll do a search against our Office 365 or our Azure Active Directory, and I can pick other individuals. Now, when I do this, as soon as I add that second person, it will ask me, do you want to create an Office 365 group for this? Um, if you're familiar with Office 365 groups, that's kind of the underpinning of Microsoft Teams. Um, so you can create a group dedicated to this, or you can add it to an already existing group. Okay, and I'm not going to go through and create a real robust plan here. I, I have some other examples of that, but as you can see, as I start putting in information here, it starts calculating what your schedule is going to look like. And if I need to push dates for whatever reason, I can always go here with a date picker and push dates out. OK, um, similar to planner, if I go into here, I can look at this more of a Kanban board style. I can go in, say, show me by progress, and now I can drag and drop update that I've started to work on that task or maybe I've completed a task. And then also you have a timeline view here. And then with the timeline view, if I want to link tasks together, I can just drag and make my dependencies. Again, very user friendly. Now from a Teams perspective, once I create this project, I can also add it to a Microsoft team. Um, so if I go back to Teams here, and I'm going to go to, I believe this project has it. So if I click on the project schedule tab, similar to how we added a planner tab to a Microsoft team, I can also have that project for the web project listed here. And then whoever's working on that can go into here. They can update their task. You know, they can switch to the Kanban board style. You can see our different buckets. And then we can also see what our progress is. OK, so. Project for the web again, it's it's great for more of that individual occasional project manager. Um, people that are currently using Excel, Planner, uh, Project Standalone, any of those are good candidates to possibly use Project for the web, and then you can always combine it with Microsoft Teams as well. So next, I'm going to take it up a notch, and we're going to start looking at more at the enterprise level. So at the enterprise level. Let me go to project online. 
So here we have the project center. Um, so when I'm in a project online, project online is really meant to give you more of a portfolio view of what's going on with your projects. So as you can see in our project center here, I can see all the different projects that are going on. When do they start? When do they finish? What's their percent complete? We can have different KPIs set up. And then over here on the right hand side, we also have a web Gantt that will show you from a timeline perspective. When are all these projects hitting and how do they relate to each other from a timeline perspective? And if you see any lines in the middle of the blue lines that basically is showing you how much work's been completed so far on that project. OK, and then with this, you know, you can always drill down further and get more information about that project, such as the project schedule, um, project details, other information as well. OK. Now what I'm going to do here, though, is I'm actually going to create a new project. And we're going to fully integrate it within Microsoft Teams also with Planner. So I'm going to go up to here. I'm going to say I'm going to create a new project. And we're going to give it a name. And then down here we have this option. Do we want to have Microsoft Teams and Planner integration with this particular project? So we're going to say yes. And when I click on finish, Project Online is going to go and create that project. Now what's also going to happen, and it'll take a couple minutes for it to happen, is a Microsoft Team will automatically get created for this project. And then we'll also create a Planner plan for this project and what we'll end up doing is synchronizing information from project online down to teams and down to planner so that for your individual project teams they can spend more time in the microsoft team than necessarily going out to project online or to a separate website so once i created that project you can see here we have a blank schedule um, I could have had a schedule template here if I wanted to, um, but I didn't pick that project type. I just picked a blank one. And what I'm going to do is staff my projects. I'm going to go to the project tab here and go to build a team. And then when I go to build a team, this is my enterprise resource pool. So here I have all my different resources and I can go through and I can pick whoever I want to work on my projects. I'm going to select Topeka. I'm going to select Jarrell and myself. I'm going to add these resources. Um, now I can also go here, for example, if I wanted to look at my resource and see what am I currently working on. This is a good example of the portfolio level view that you get with Project Online. So when I go into here, I can see all the different projects that I've been assigned to and what are the tasks on those projects I've been assigned to. Again, portfolio view of everything. And then if I go to capacity planning here, it shows me what my workload looks like over the next few months. Um, so again, you get a lot of this portfolio reporting and portfolio view of information. So for now, what I'm gonna do is go back, whoops, go back to build a team. And I'm going to hit save and close. And it's going to add these people to my project team. So now I can go in, I can start building out my project schedule. So I'm going to create several tasks here. project schedule. I'm going to go in, set some durations for my task. And similar to how you saw with project for the web, based on the information I'm putting in, it's calculating what the schedule is going to be. I'm also going to link those tasks together so you can see it building out my project schedule. 
But now what I want to do is go in to my resource column and pick the individuals that I've added to my project team. So I'm going to assign some of these tasks to Topeka. Some to Jarrell and I'm going to assign one to me. And then you'll notice we also have this other column for synchronizing with planner. So what's nice about this is I can go in. I can say yes, and that means that in planner this task will now be synchronized. So I both have it in my project schedule. I'll also have it over in planner. Planner is a much more simple user interface. So your users can just simply drag and drop and do task updates. You don't necessarily need them to log in directly to project online. Um, and I can also selectively choose what task do I want to sync. So maybe it's only for certain individuals. I want them to use planner. Maybe some I want them to use a timesheet inside a project online. I can selectively choose. In this case, I'm going to synchronize all of them. So just like in Excel, I can do fills here. And I'm also going to go in and specify which planner bucket these tasks are going to go into. So I'm going to put some of these in our initiation bucket and then some are going to be in our execution bucket. Okay, so we got our project schedule set up. We have our resources assigned. We have our planner sync set up. So what I'm going to do is go back to teams real quick. And you can see down here it automatically created that Microsoft team. And if I click on the general tab, you'll see it's set up our planner plan and some other tabs, which I'll come back and show you that are linked back to project online. So what I'm going to do is publish these changes. And a couple things will happen when I do a publish. It's going to push out all these tasks. The individuals will get email notifications that they've been assigned to this project and these are the tasks that they're working on. Um, but it's also going to synchronize this data over to planner and to teams. So once I publish it, I'm going to click on close here and just check it in. I guess with everybody working from home, this is taking a little longer than usual. I did get my notifications, Neil. OK, good. Working on my tasks. Already? Yep. <laughs> I haven't even closed my project yet. Um, you're such a show off. So let me go to Teams while we're waiting for that. So as I mentioned, you know, we go back to teams. When I published that project, um, well, when I created the project, it did set up this team. So it automatically created the team. It created a planner plan. So if we go here, we can see the planner plan. And as you can see, there's already task here. So as I published that, those tasks were synchronized over to here. And as Topeka was mentioning, she was showing off, so she's already completed two of those tasks. Um, you can also see there's the buckets that I move those tasks into. So if I go into here and I want to look at it by progress, we can see those tasks have been completed. I can also go into here and say I've started working on this task and just simply do a drag and drop. Now, the other tabs that we have here is the schedule. So if I click on the schedule, it'll show us the project schedule that we were just looking at over in Project Online. If I click on Project Documents, this will show me the document library for that project. So the project team can drag and drop and work on documents here. Um, that you know any working documents that they might have for the project. We also have an issue risk. I'm sorry, an issue log and a risk log. So again, they can add to this or add to the risk log as well right here within Teams. And for some of our customers, you might also have things like change requests or action items, other project related lists that you want to manage. 
they can also be added here as, as tabs. And on the post screen, a couple things, you know, one is it'll automatically add individuals to your to your Microsoft team. So when I added them to my project schedule and then published, you can see here the people already responded. So I can go ahead and say great. Um, what's nice about teams and the post tab here when it comes to project management is a couple things. One is this is persistent chat. So any conversations you and your team might be having about this particular project never go away. They'll stay here forever until someone decides to delete them. Um, but they're always here, so you can always go back and refer to chats or maybe look at documents that have been posted, things like that. Um, also, for example, if I go up to here to another project, it's a little more busy. If they shared a document, you know, that document will show up here as well. Um, you can also set up the team to have its own email address. So if you have any communications, maybe with vendors or customers, you can CC the Microsoft team and then that email will show up here automatically. Here's another example of that. So if I forward that email to the Microsoft team, it automatically puts it in here with a link to the document. If you schedule project meetings, so if I go up here, here's a project meeting. You can see here this project's tagged to this particular Microsoft team. And when we do that, let me scroll back up here. If we record the meetings, those recordings automatically show up here as well. So it's great for situations where project team members might not be able to make the meeting but you want them to go back and listen to what was discussed or see what people were sharing on their screen. So here you can see, you know, whatever was being discussed, whatever was being shown. So again, it's a great thing to have for projects um, because you can record the meetings if you're discussing requirements or particular issues. Everybody can kind of be on the same page and go back and look at the recording whenever they need to. Um, this is leveraging the stream functionality inside of Office 365. And then one last thing I'll point out is we also, whenever you update the project schedule, we'll push out a little mini status report. So the rest of the project team members can then see what the current status is. All right, so if I go back to our project we just created, as I mentioned in Planner, your team members can use drag and drop to update their status. Also, if I go to the planner app inside of Teams, those tasks will be show, will show up here as well. So you can see there's our project. You can see there's that task that I just added. So for the team members, they can do it here. They can do it back in the Microsoft team, whatever they want to do to keep their task updated and know what they're supposed to be working on. Um, now, as they're making those updates, so if we go back to here, so you can see when I dragged and dropped over here in the planner tab, it's the same information, so it's updated here. If I want to pull these updates into my project schedule, so let me move a couple of these into in progress. If I go to the schedule tab, Up here on the ribbon, you'll see this get planner updates. So if I click on this for the project manager, this will pull in those updates and update your project schedule for you. So I'll be able to see what tasks have been completed so far and then what tasks are still ongoing. So it takes a minute or so, so we'll come back to this and see those updates in a second. But if I go back to the uh, post tab here, you can see there's that mini status report and then also Topeka's message. So let's go back to here, see if our updates came in yet. It's like it's still working on them. In the meantime, let me show you a couple other things. So also in Teams, uh, we've done this for some other customers. We'll set up a team for the overall PMO. And some functionality that you might look at inside a project online, like the Project Center, which I was showing you earlier we can expose out here in Teams. 
If your resources are doing timesheets in Project Online, we can go here and we can see their timesheet, their task list. And then also, if you're doing Project Online, you probably also have Power BI dashboards. We can also add the Power BI dashboards here as well. So if I want everybody to be able to see whatever our current status is, look at some of the different reports we might have, we can easily go in here and take a look at that. All right. Let me go back here. Let's see if our updates came in yet. They still haven't come in, so I guess things are running a little bit slow with everybody working from home, but the updates will be in here in, in a bit, so let me make sure it's checked in. In the meantime, do we have any questions for the folks that are facilitating? Um, Neil, I just wanted to mention to everyone, I think some folks are maybe having an issue with the chat window for asking questions. It's um, based on certain permissions, so sorry about that. But um, towards the end, Neil, if you can just share the slide that has our email addresses. I will. And, um, if you guys have questions, you can send us an email and we can always jump back on a call or um, or email back and forth with any questions you guys might have. OK, great. I saw Jeff posted a couple of uh, links to those Power BI reports that I just briefly showed. Um, they are downloadable, so you're able to use these from Microsoft. If you just follow that link to GitHub that Jeff just posted. Any, so we're, we're not able to get any questions right now. I don't believe so. I don't so. want to keep asking for questions. If no yeah, questions. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe so. So we'll, we'll come back um, via, via email as people Thank have you. questions. It's Jeff with Microsoft. I think hey, the Jeff. one topic that's asked in most of the webinars um, around this is a task that exists in Outlook, a task that exists in Teams, a task in a perhaps planner and project uh, uh, for web, so how that, um, where those exist and how they can be leveraged across the systems. Yeah, that's a good point. So, you know, one, one thing that Microsoft's been doing over the past, I guess, year or so, a little bit longer than that, is um, for the task management type functionality, a lot of the tasks, at least with the Office 365 level, are all leveraging the same service. So, when you have planner, you have to do, you have Outlook task, which is now using to do. Um, they're all using that same underlying kind of unified task interface. Um, and then as we get into like project for the web and project online, it's a little bit different um, currently, but as Microsoft starts rolling out, particularly project for the web, you'll start to see more of that uh, being uh, utilizing the same task management interface. Um, so it's a it's kind of a work in progress, but it's getting there. And in particular, Mike showed some of this earlier. Um, if you go to the waffle menu, whoops. So you'll see some of these. One is you'll see planner. And that as I showed, would be for the individual user, it'll be an aggregation of all the tasks across all the planner plans and um, the different uh, plans that they've been assigned to and tasks have been created for. But then you also have the to-do app. <clears throat> so if I open up the to-do app here, I can go into here and manage my own individual task list. as you want but you also notice here you have planned view so what's supposed to be done today what's coming up later and if you go to assign to you this is where your planner tasks are also being added 
So you can see this is that task that I marked as complete over in Planner inside of Microsoft Teams and over here in To Do. It's already showed up as completed already. So again, it's all being, you know, it's it's all kind of a unified task management interface. So as you create tasks in different areas, we're then able to show that information um, in the other apps as well. So you don't have to jump from app to app. You should be able to see it in one centralized location. And each of these have their own mobile apps too, as you can see down here, so which is pretty nice. So if you do have field workers or anybody that um, is always on the go, they could also see these tasks assigned to them from either the planner mobile app or the to do mobile app. And Outlook. All right. Hey Neil, I got a quick question from uh, through email. Um, is there a way for project intake in Project Online or in the interface that you're showing? Good point. So one of the things that we can take a look at real quick is for project intake. Um, one of the things that we've been doing, I would say for the last 18 months or so, is we'll leverage uh, parts of the Power Platform to augment some of the core project management functionality, whether it's project for the web or project online. And PMOs have all kinds of different processes that also need to be taken into account. It's not just scheduling. So project intake is a good example of that. So with project intake, um, typically we'll leverage Power Apps, which is part of the Power Platform. So with Power Apps, Power Apps is where we can build a, a UI, right, a user interface. Typically that means some forms so that we can collect the information about that project request or the business case. And then using Power Automate, we can then route that request through an approval process. So for example, here, if I click on new request, this will open up a Power App. So if I go into here, you can see we have a form with different tabs to collect different levels of information. And I can go into here, I'll say uh, Microsoft Demo. Who's my project sponsor? So I'm just gonna search for myself. So this is looking up against Tat Directory. We can also have different request types. So this is a good example. I just showed you where we have different options depending on you know how much project management do we need um, with the Microsoft platform. So with a marketing campaign, maybe I just want to do Microsoft Teams and Planner. I don't want to have a full blown project online schedule or a project for the web schedule. But for an IT project, you know, maybe I want to use project for the web or project online. So with these request types and using Power Automate, we can actually route it to the right uh, solution and then create maybe the Microsoft team or the project online project automatically. So in this case, I'm just going to say an IT project. <clears throat> and then below here, we have other fields where we can collect information about this particular project request. So what's the description? What's your business challenge? What's the business value? And if I go to project details, you know, again, you can see other project request type information. You know, what's your go live date? some financial information. We could even do attachments. So maybe I have a SOW or a spec from a vendor. I could attach those and include it in the request. So when I go into here and I fill this basic level information out and then save it, at that point, Power Automate will kick in. So it'll see that a new request was submitted. And then depending on how I have my flow set up, it's gonna route it for approval. Um, that routing for approval might look at different levels of information within the form. So for example, if I have different amount of funding that's needed, maybe it needs to go to multiple signatures versus one signature. So we can put that kind of logic in Power Automate. Um, so what it's going to do is it's going to send me an email. So I'm going to open that email up real quick, drag it over to here. So here you can see that request that was just submitted in my email. I could either approve it or reject it. We can also have other buttons 
maybe we need more information to make the decision. We want to reroute it to somebody else. We could add additional functionality through Power Automate. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and approve it. Hit submit. And now when I go to the project center, might take a couple more minutes, but we should see our project show up in here. Let me refresh. And there it is. So there you can see that's that project we just requested. So now if I open this up, since I said it was an IT project, it has the different elements that we would want to manage an IT project. So maybe we have certain phases it has to go through. That's what you're seeing here. We also have a business case, you know, some financials, the schedules pre-populated with a schedule template. Um, so it's basically linked up to an enterprise project type within Project Online. And at this point, similar to what I showed you earlier, a Microsoft team will get created for this. And then we can also synchronize task to planner. Um, okay. Neil, one one more related question, I think. Um, so there was a question via email. They're using PWA for project management, and the question is: Are SharePoint project sites still utilized? They are. Um, it really depends on how you want to set up your environment. So. So you can have it where every time you create a project, it automatically creates that SharePoint site. Um, really working with other customers kind of depends on your requirements for each project type, but kind of the default mode with Project Online is it will create that dedicated SharePoint site. And then what we do in Teams is <clears throat> when we synchronize it with Teams, we're not really synchronizing and what we're doing is exposing that information here within Teams. So when I look at this document library, it's looking at that SharePoint site over in Project Online. <clears throat> what other questions do we have so far? Um, there was another email asking for the slide deck and we will share that out after the event um, today, so. Okay. So let me go back to our slide deck. So real quick about Marquee 360. So we're a Power Platform partner, we're a SharePoint partner, and also a project partner. Um, so a lot of what we do is we focus in on these three core platforms, so SharePoint, Teams, and Project Online. But we leverage the Power Platform to, as you just saw, to interconnect the different components and to help you digitalize a lot of your, uh, a lot of your business processes. Um, so again, you know, we kind of focus on those three areas and then we build out a lot of Power Apps flows and Power BI reports to facilitate your process. Um, I'll just put up our contact info. If you have any other questions, feel free to email me or Topeka. Sounds good. Mike, did you want to wrap this up? Sure, yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, apologies for the, uh, the Q&A portion of this. We'll get that fixed for our next uh, co-presentation. Um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to, to again, email the folks here at Marquee 360. Um, we'll work together to put the slides from, from both presentations and the resources together that Jeff uh, published and, and I published all together in one, one place for you to get that all. Thanks so much for joining today. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everyone.